Hey y'all and welcome to Cyber Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today we are back in the kitchen making Salisbury steak. No whoops this time. <laughs> no, well, we, we, haven't got, we haven't got started just yet. There might be some whoops that are happening. Um, but this is always a classic dish that we love to have. It's Sunday when we're filming, so on Sundays you have nice hearty family meals. Yeah. And so if you've never made it, we're going to show you how to do it. All right, so what are you doing, babe? First, I am peeling some potatoes and I'm going to cut them up and then boil them because we're going to have mashed potatoes with it. All right, and so while she's doing the mashed potatoes, I am going to start doing the Salisbury steak piece. So... Look at this first. Oh. Isn't that wild looking? Is it focused? No. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Looks like a geode. <laughs> a geode. All right, so we're going to put about a half cup of breadcrumbs in here. This is a cup that I have in this mason jar, so... One thing you know with us, just measure with your heart. A half cup of breadcrumbs, and then I need to cut up. We're gonna cut up a whole onion, but we're gonna use half for this, and the other half will be for the gravy. So let's start by just cutting it up completely. All right, we're gonna set that to the side. All right, now I'm going to mince up our garlic, which I've got three cloves here. But again, you can never have too much garlic if you're a garlic fan, so use however much you want to. Isn't that right, babe? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I won't do cream peas since we're already having a lot of wet things. <laughs> I appreciate that. And this is our elephant garlic from last year. Elephant garlic is more in the leek family, so it's a little bit milder garlic flavor. So we use a little bit more. Uh, so you might just want to use one or two cloves of regular old garlic. Half is going in our mix for our beef and the other half will wait for our gravy. Now this one I'm not gonna finally dice. I'm just gonna cut thinly. All right, now we're gonna start adding the rest of the stuff. So the first is your ground, whoa, that's shaky. Apologies. First is the ground beef. We're doing a pound. This is from our cow. Gonna do one egg. About two tablespoons of ketchup. I'm gonna do about a half teaspoon of Worcester sauce, but this is Dell seasoning because we don't have Worcester sauce, so use what you want. About three teaspoons of Dijon mustard. All right, so there it is. If you cut, catch an eye, it kind of looks like, like a, a meatloaf for what you're doing. So now I'm just gonna use my hands and mix this all together. All right, we've got it all mixed up, so I'm just gonna make a little bit smaller than hamburger sized patties. You don't wanna be huge. All right, we have a nice sizzling hot skillet. So we are dropping these in just to brown them real quick on each side. Remember, they will still be raw. You're not trying to cook them done. You just want to get them a nice sear on there. Meanwhile, our taters are boiling, so we're going to let them boil for a few minutes to get them tender. And then our peas are going. These are peas from our garden that we picked and shelled. And I threw them in with some butter and some garlic and salt and pepper, and they're going to be really good. So we just flipped them over. You can see we have some nice browning, nice crispy edges on it. You're gonna want that because everything's soft, so you want it nice and crispy. Remember when you flip, don't push down. That's gonna take all the juices up and make your meat real dry. All right, we're gonna turn our heat down to medium, and then we're gonna remove our... <laughs> Got it! <laughs> whoops. it. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I got schligger, schligger and schnott right there. <laughs> all right, we're just gonna place these on a, on a plate or whatever to sit to the side for a minute. All right, now it is time to make the gravy. So this is gonna be like an onion gravy. It would be an onion mushroom gravy, but we don't have any mushrooms, so it's just gonna be <laughs> onions. So right now I'm dicing in that other half of that onion that we had and the garlic just to get those translucent and it's flavorful. You see how it's picking up all these black specks? That's from your meat that you just cooked. It's called uh, deglazing the plant, the pan, and. I guess. <laughs> Um, you want all that. You want all those little crispy bits. That's just free flavor for your gravy. All right, once that's gone, about two, three minutes, depending on how crunchy or soft that you want your onions. We like a little crunchy. We're going to throw in three tablespoons of butter. That's our butter from our dairy cow. We're going to let that milk down, and then we're going to apply three tablespoons of flour to start building our root. It's a completely unrelated side note, but since it's in the background, I just wanted to bring it up. This ice cream maker, we've had it for three or four years now. Mm. It is the best ice cream maker we have ever had. So in the summertime, our cow is always in milk. We've always got goat's milk. We're milking everyone. That's Milk and eggs is our biggest thing during the summertime. So 
ice cream is one of our favorite things to make with that leftover cow's milk and that leftover cream. We try to do it at least once a week, but it's even better if it's like every other night. And it's not that bad for you because it's raw milk from our cow straight from the farm. But I love this ice cream maker. People are always searching up ones. I'm always searching up ice cream recipes and ice cream makers. So I just wanted to say it'll be linked below if you've been looking for one because it's summertime and you should be looking for one. Give your baby <laughs> some homemade ice cream. There's nothing better. All right, as soon as your butter's melted, you wanna apply your three tablespoons of flour to make your roux for your gravy. Now we're gonna stir this all in and you can just keep it filming because I know when you make gravy, this is one of those things that like, man, I just don't need to see the whole daggone thing. You're looking for it to get all nice, thick and clumpy. Absorb all that in. And then once we get that cooked in there, because you want to cook that flour down, you don't want it to be all nice and gritty, right? You don't want it to be all gritty. All right, and once you've added that in there, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Dirty up a new dish. You're gonna stir constantly for 30 seconds. Now we have two tablespoons of broth. Two um, cups. Yeah, shoot, my bad. <laughs> two cups of, this is bone broth. It's bone broth we made. Um, probably would wanna use beef broth, but boss broth, <laughs> in my opinion, bone broth tastes good. So we're just gonna start slowly applying this. You don't wanna apply it all at once. Because the thing about gravy is I can tell you it's three tablespoons of flour and two cups of bone broth and that's going to get you to where you want to be. But that could be wrong that day, you know, just depending on where the moon's, kind of how the moon's rocking and rolling. So we're just going to keep slowly applying this in until we kind of get clump free and to the thickness level that we want. You can see how the two are starting to form together. We still have our clumps, but you're going to have clumps in this because it's got onions in it. So remember that. It's not just like making regular brown or white gravy. Um, but we're just gonna keep stirring this, keep watching it. The thing is, once it goes, it goes. So you just gotta keep paying attention to it um, and make sure that you're not adding too much. The one thing about it is, if you do, uh, if it gets too thick too quick, you can always just add a little bit more water, a little bit more broth, you're just gonna be making more gravy. So it's nothing too much to stress out about. It's getting there now. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be good. So now that we've gotten basically the whole roux blended together in with the bone broth and we're kind of, you see how we're starting to get there at a thicker level. It's creamy. We don't want to, we're not trying to get all the way to the end just yet because we're going to put our Salisbury steaks back in there. But first, some seasoning. So we're going to do two teaspoons of Dell seasoning, two teaspoons of Dijon. I don't know about you all, but I love pepper in my gravy. What about you, babe? Yes, it's a must. So we're going to do a pretty good amount of black pepper. Careful. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> and then some salt and stir this bad boy together. Now it's time to reapply our Salisbury steak in there. So I'm just kind of scooting them on down in there, making them nice and comfy. Gotta, we taste test our gravy. You got to taste test it. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. So it's done. We, need, we had to add a little bit more black pepper yeah. and a little bit more Dale's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that on medium heat. I want to take our Dutch oven top cover up our cast iron here. And all we're doing now is just finishing up those hamburger or those Salisbury steaks and we'll be ready to eat. All right, now we're on Jen's time. What you doing, Jen? I'm draining the potatoes. Draining potatoes for homemade mashed taters, huh? We're gonna throw all that butter in there. That's our cow's butter. We're gonna throw in some sour cream. This might not be the way you do it, but it's really good. Uh, there's no other way you it. want to do it. I'm telling <laughs> you, at least give it a try. All right, we're gonna throw in our cow's milk, which is raw and whole, so it's got the cream with it. And the secret ingredient is everything with the bagel seasoning. So this is our seasoning that we sell. It changes mashed potatoes in a way that you just can't understand unless you try it. <laughs> I second that back. And then we mash and we let everything come together. And we like clumps in ours so we don't get them all the way mashed down. We just get it to the level that we want. It's so good. There you go. Creamy and perfect and good. Get you that everything bagel seasoning. It's in our shop and it's so good. There they are. Yum. Now it's time to plate. You want yours on mashed potatoes or on the side of mashed potatoes? Side. All right. And everybody knows there's only one way to eat Salisbury steak. And that's when you put it on top of a piece of white bread. It's the only way to do it. Jen's crazy and saying over here, not oh wanting a piece of bread underneath of it. But y'all know her. She's not a big fan of mm -hmm. soggy. So that was amazing. It was. <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. It was comfort food at its finest. Mm -hmm. So 
Hopefully you're interested in that. If you are, try to the recipe. We'll have it all linked down below. And that's it for the recipe portion of this. Mm -hmm. However, it's time to go have a little fun. <laughs> Let's go. Right, after dinner, do a little playtime. So our local friends that we met last weekend, they took us down to a spot close to our house where we can get to the Cumberland River. And it's really a short little ride, um, but it's something nice to do and let the kids go play in the creek for a little bit. I guess the river, <laughs> not the creek, but it's a nice little shallow spot. Daddy, that's like a perfect rock crystal. Yes, it is. Let's see your skills. Nice. There we go. Like it doesn't look cool, but when you're not recording, it looks sick. <laughs> there we go. Did y'all have fun? Where are you yeah, at, Mama? Yeah. There you are. There you are. <laughs> we like a little river spot? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. It is pretty sweet. It's more like a creek. I mean, it is the river, but it's yeah. flat, you know, bank like a creek. Very low spot yeah. of the river. You can walk pretty much all the way out to the middle of it. Um, and then it gets deeper as it yeah. goes. And it's public. Um, we've heard that they do baptisms down here, so mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. We like just coming to hang out. We're starting to really find some of the local spots. We like it. So now it's time to go eat a popsicle. Popeyes. <laughs> Popeyes. It's popsicle. Popeyes. Popeyes. What do y'all call the ones in the bag? I'll show you here in a minute. Yeah, they're Popeyes. It's popsicles. <laughs> go ahead and comment. Popeyes. Popsicle. Okay, show them. Show the camera what you got in your hand. What do you call those things? Popsicles. <laughs> so we call it popsicle. My vote. Pop ice. Her vote. What do you call it? Popeyes. Popsicle. Popsicle. <laughs>